It's the encounter you've been waiting for. Ezra. Ezra. What? He refuses to come on this show, so I took this show to him. Do you still think that people who disagree with you should be put in jail? Tonight, we show you what happens when the lefty's favorite saint, David Suzuki, meets me face to face. It's got your program now. It's a must-see source. <laughs> For years, Canadians knew David Suzuki as the host of the CBC Science program, The Nature of Things. He was a friendly guide for us, explaining the natural wonders of the world, often from exotic and wild locations. But over the years, Suzuki changed. He became more of a celebrity entertainer and less of a scientist. More about politics and less about facts. More about money and less about public service. In a shocking breach of CBC rules about being politically nonpartisan, Suzuki taped a TV ad for the Ontario Liberal Party. And instead of lecturing at schools for the public good, he started touring for his private good, charging students a whopping $30,000 an hour for a visit. Here's his invoice from his recent visit to John Abbott College in Montreal for $41,000, including expenses. And like an aging, eccentric rock star, he didn't just ask for money, but for bizarre contract riders, too. Like this request that when he visited that college, that he be escorted by an all-female entourage, college girls only, in his security detail. Here's a college memo about Suzuki's strange request, and I quote, We have learned via Dr. Suzuki's assistant that although the doctor does not like to have bodyguards per se, he does not mind having a couple of ladies, females, that would act as bodyguards, unquote. Ah, like an aging rock star, a little bit demanding, a little bit creepy, too. Suzuki used to be the little guy, but now he's become big business. He incorporated the David Suzuki Foundation that earned a whopping $9 million last year, has $12 million in assets, including more than $10 million in investments. Huh. I wonder what corporations he's invested in. And he started hiring lobbyists. One, then two, then five, now nine registered lobbyists in Ottawa. On TV, Suzuki built up a reputation as a humble man, never in a suit and tie, always aw shucks about things, and always weaving in a morality tale about how mankind's appetites are just too big. But in real life, he has the biggest appetites of all. Uh, one of his favorite speeches is a warning that the world is overpopulated and that we're about to run out of resources. But in his own life, he has five children himself. Uh, he declared his support for Occupy Vancouver, the anti-corporate, anti-capitalist street rally for the 99% against the 1%. He gave a speech to them railing against corporations and money. But when he was done his Occupy speech, he went home to his house on Vancouver's elite Point Grey Road, overlooking the Kitsilano Yacht Club, with a gorgeous, unobstructed view of English Bay. It's a double-sized lot. What two regular families would live on? The land alone is assessed by the city of Vancouver at more than $8 million. And that's just one of Suzuki's many homes. He has at least two others, valued at about a million bucks or more. And then there's this head scratcher. I mean, he's got a couple of homes in Vancouver, the main one, and then one on Laburnum Road. He's got a home on Quadra Island, that's his cottage, with a boat dock. I'm sure a fossil fuel hater would never have a boat that uses gasoline, right? But he also co-owns property on Nelson Island, B.C. He co-owns it with an oil company. Kootenai Oil Distributors. Let me say that again. Not only does David Suzuki, the anti-materialist, anti-growth, anti-corporate activist, own one, two, three, four properties in British Columbia alone, but one of them, a large one, he co-owns with an oil company? Huh? How? Why? Now, I'm not saying they're drilling for oil there. I mean, I think it might just be... Uh, joint ownership, I don't know, a condominium or something they co-own, I don't know. But I do know this. I bet it would shock a lot of Suzuki lovers that the saint himself jointly owns any property, in any manner, with an oil company. The contradictions keep adding up.